So this is my um, this is my Game Boy Zero, uh, which is a little project that um, I built after being inspired by seeing a bunch of people online um, uh, building um, similar projects. Uh, and you kind of start as you'd expect with a uh, with, with, with an old knackered uh, Game Boy, uh, late late 80s vintage, and uh, kind of once you've you've cracked it open and filleted out the board and everything else, you've got enough space inside there to fit a uh, a Raspberry Pi um, a computer, a little Linux computer. And, uh, and all the other bits and bobs you need, like a keyboard, um, uh, sort of, or, or I should say, a, a, a board to house the, um, the, you know, the buttons um, uh, for this. And there's a bunch of emulators, like Mame, you know, the, the old arcade emulator, and uh, you know, it's a very impressive uh, kind of bunch of things you can you can have uh, on your, um, uh, you know, in your, in your pocket. You know, I mean, hey, this is this is me when I was ten years old. Original Space Invaders, um, and. Uh, uh, and so this is my first stab at a build. Uh, essentially, I've gutted out uh, an old Game Boy, picked it up on eBay for five pounds or something stupid, and uh, and in here is a Raspberry Pi, a uh, uh, a board to take control of the uh, the, the buttons, and a uh, a screen which is a. Um, taken from it's one of those sort of aftermarket third party reversing screens for your car if you put a little camera in the back of your car and uh, and I'm quite pleased with the way this one's but turned out you know um, I've reused a lot of the uh, the case sort of holes whereas that would have been the contrast knob on a on a Game Boy is now my power button I've got my um, charging port there and uh, a USB port there for loading in new games and uh, and the original volume knob and I've got two uh, you know left and right shoulder buttons there on the back for games that require it the uh, the game uh, the, the Raspberry Pi 1 which this is based off of um, will not do N64 games. It's pretty good at all those sort of like Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 consoles, you know, Mega Drives, uh, Genesis, um, Super Nintendo, even PlayStation 1, but uh, but no good for those kind of mid-90s type consoles. For that, you need a Raspberry 3, which is going to be my third build. Um, but uh, this is this is a video just about this first build, and I give full credit to, to Wormy. Um, uh, his, his YouTube channel is excellent. I'll link that down below. Uh, and uh, he hangs out on the Pseudomod uh, forums. Um uh, Great Scott, German uh, YouTuber. Again, he did a fantastic couple of videos about his um, uh, Raspberry Zero build, his his Game Boy Zero build, I should say, and uh, and and they've all been a great help to me. And uh, I've kind of got two more planned. I've got one planned based on uh, another pseudo mod. Um, uh, uh, guy called Kite, who's actually produced a really nice board of his own that entirely replaces the internal board on the Game Boy and uh, houses the screen, much like the way Nintendo originally did this 30 years ago. He's done one where he replaces it with a Raspberry Zero, the little tiny credit card version of a Raspberry Pi, uh, uh, and, and I'll be building that in the next few weeks. And then my third one is going to be based off of a um, an old Sega Game Gear, there's a few things to consider when when you want to um, uh, homebrew uh, a Game Boy Zero. Uh, you know, putting all the parts, including the Raspberry um, uh, computer and all the other bits and bobs, inside the shell of a Game Boy. Uh, and this is, uh, if, I, if I just uh, move uh, my my build out of the way, this is a you know an old school Game Boy. It's not half taken apart here. You can see the uh, the board that's in the back, and of course. This board um, is is perfectly manufactured because they were churning out millions of these things a year, um, uh, and of course the, uh, the 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 buttons are, are resistive pads, um, like there's one here, there's little kind of carbon material pads that press down on 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 um, lands on the on the circuit board, and and that's how it senses whether you're pressing up, down, left, right, A, B, X, Y, etc. Um, uh, and and so you know this is a very neatly um, integrated solution of, of circuitry and and the speaker and the volume and everything else into into one board and if I pull in the other end of the uh, the, the game cube the, the, the game boy the rear of it uh, you can see that's that's where um, actually the processing goes and where the where the slot for the cartridge is and uh, you know there's the headphone jack there so there's an awful lot um, uh, going on inside one of these little handheld consoles even if it is from the uh, the late 80s uh, but it does make a perfect um, uh, um, box into which to build uh, a, a, a retro pie style um, your emulation station game machine and so here's one I've been working on for a little while this is this is just my first one I've got three planned uh, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about about how I achieved some of the things so you'll notice that the keyboard um, on mine 
and bear in mind if I if I spin it around to the front, you can see I've got um, A, B, X, and Y keys as well as the usual start, select, and and, and the number pads. And in fact, I've also got um, uh, shoulders left and right on the back as well using little tactile switches. Uh, but to achieve that, you've kind of got to go a little bit beyond what the original Game Boy had. And um, you know, here's here's the um, here's the PCB, the other side of the PCB, um, which uh, is where um, that you know resistive pad sits. So if I sort of like offer that up there you can see how it works and 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 that that shorts out the the carbon tracks and you get button pushes um but of course uh this is just for an original uh, game boy uh and i've got a and b but i haven't got any x and y and the the the, the select and start buttons are particularly fiddly and so there's a couple of uh, solutions um the guy whose videos started me off on this kind of set of builds, uh, a guy called um, Wormy on the Pseudomod forums, he just takes this board, you know, dremels off half of the uh, half of the board here. So I spin that round. So it's the same one that, that goes there, as you can see. He dremels off half of that between those two posts there, and he literally scrapes off and finds the tracks that correspond to each each button press and and wires them. You can see, I had a go at it. Uh, and I was not successful, even using very fine Carnar wire. And I've got a good soldering iron, good soldering station, and I've been repairing electronics for 25 years. I could not get this to work reliably. And then there's the small matter of the additional X and Y buttons up here, uh, which which um, Wormy uh, solves with some copper self-adhesive tape up here. And it's quite a neat solution when you see it on his videos. And you should go watch all of his videos. They're very good. Uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't make that work at all. So I took the other route, which is if you watch uh, Great Scott, uh, he has another great YouTube channel. He does, he does a, a Game Boy Zero build as well. And he does it with strip board, which is how I started. Um, and you can see I've got all the you know, Carnal wires wired to all these various positions. You can see I marked in pen when I was sort of doing this, you know, where the buttons land on the strip board. And uh, with a, a judicious use of a, a strip board cutting tool, you can make unique track pairs for each of the button press areas. With the exception of select and start, I, you know, they, they are just too small to work with regular um, uh, copper strip board. And so I wound up just dremeling out a piece of the original Game Boy circuit and using that for those. Uh, but you can see this works kind of well. Um, you know, I, re I worked and reworked this a few times, and so it's kind of a bit messy. But, you know, it works pretty well now that I've got it going, uh, and, and, uh, and all the button presses are accurately received. And, and you know, this little Kynar loom here, uh, goes down um, uh, behind where the, the, the Raz Pi sits, which I just nudge it out of the way. You can see goes all the way down to this board down here, which is you know hot snotted, hot hot metal, metal glued onto the, the back of the Game Boy case. And what is that little board? Well, um, uh, it is the guts of one of these guys, one of these cheap little, um, uh, you know, sort of five dollars, five euros um, SNES controllers, which has got all the buttons you want: X, Y, A, B, Start, Select. You know, the, the, the up, down, left, right pads, and also the shoulder buttons. They're all in there. And so, in a sense, that goes to a, uh, a USB connector, uh, just like that. And, and if you were doing a regular uh, Raspberry build, uh, you know, to use with your television or something, you wouldn't think twice about it. That works just fine. But it's very easy to rip open one of those guys, pull the circuit board out, and, uh, you know, it's not hard to solder onto these pads, which is how I did it. So, in essence, my Raspberry... Um, RetroPie get emulation station uh, build that's sitting on this SD card here with a bunch of games on it doesn't know that we're not using a, a regular USB controller and in fact if I flip this over you can see uh, to make a Raspi 1 work in this build I had to take off the USB headers and the, the Ethernet headers which aren't used anyway and there's my there's my um, USB um, connections there one of which goes to the uh, the, 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 the gamepad board which is now down there with a suitable amount of um, uh, you know PVC tape stop, stop anything shorting and I take the other one up to the side of the case there which just presents on the side of the case as a, as a USB uh, jack there so I can use that for um, uh, you know using a uh, RetroPie has a fantastic feature where if you put um, uh, new ROMs on a memory stick you can plug the memory stick in the side and, and they'll get copied off into the correct folders uh, for, for RetroPie to, uh, to, to ingest and, and you can then play those games. Additionally, 
um, uh, those little Edimax uh, Wi-Fi adapters that you see, um, uh, you know, online for like five dollars, five pounds, or whatever. You stick one of those in there. Linux recognizes it, and you can SSH or FTP into the file system of the Raspberry. And again, that's brilliant. That works really well. And so I kind of think that I came to the nicest solution because when you look at um, uh, well, if you look at Great Scott's build of a Raspberry Zero, he he does the same strip board um, construction as me, but he um, he then goes to the GPIO pins of the Raspberry, and I think he's got an additional bit of software running on his his build, which turns those into 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 button pushes. Um, uh, Wormy he does it with a uh, an Arduino Teensy, which he's programmed to interpret the uh, the GPIO closures as as USB button pushes. And so they're all methods that work. But this kind of was the easiest one for me for this first kind of Raspberry build here, which um, uh, is is what you see before you. The uh, the screen on, on this this Raspberry. Um, you know, Game Boy Zero build uh, uses one of those cheap, you know, fifteen dollar um, car third, you know, aftermarket third party car reversing cameras, which is, yeah, you know, in retrospect, um, it's a cheap little system, and uh, you know, if I, sorry, if, I, if I turn this this one on, I think there's enough charge left in the battery. You can see up comes the uh, up comes the uh, the the the, uh, the boot page, and uh, you know, there's the the one. The one Raspberry because it's a Raspberry One, and uh, and and up it boots. Um, but um, this was a um, uh, there we go RetroPie. Um, let's just tilt that camera up a bit. Can you see that a bit better? Uh, uh, the, 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 so this is a um, uh, as I say a car reversing camera, and it has two. Um, uh, you know, obviously you have to bust it out of the little plastic case that it comes in, but it has two video inputs, and it switches between whichever one's active, which is quite cute. You can kind of imagine in a, in a car system that might be quite nice to to switch in the reversing camera at the rear, um, away from well, maybe the output of the stereo or something. And and but ordinarily this is powered off the 12 volts of the car, uh, and so a bit of investigation uh, revealed that the, there's actually a 5 volt regulator just there on the board. And if you look carefully, and I'll put a high res photo in, you can you can see that I had to. Uh, take that chip off and uh, it's just a little a little 12 to 5 volt regulator and I've landed my 5 volts directly onto on, onto 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 that output pin there so this thing now happily runs off of 5 volts and there's a little bit of video coax you can see going down here onto the uh, the composite um, output of the Raspberry and uh, so that's that's there landed there on the board you can see it's hot glued on Obviously soldered on, but hot glued for, for 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 rigidity and to protect it. And uh, and we're kind of we're we're booted up now to an emulation station. So I'll just adjust that a bit, and we'll go to I don't know. Let's find a something suitable. Uh, something on the Mega Drive. And uh, let's have a look at a bit of Sonic maybe. Usual. I mean, this is exactly if you were running uh, RetroPie on your uh, telly or whatever. But what you might have noticed is that although the game looks kind of okay, you know, and it's very playable, um, what you might have noticed is the interface is very, very... Uh, the, the resolution isn't high enough, really, for the interface. And so I think on subsequent builds, I'm going to use a um, one of the HDMI screens you can get, which is... Um, uh, has uh, you know, obviously a digital input, so it's less. You know, it's not, none of this kind of gribbly noise that's present on this analog screen, but also it's uh, typically higher res, sort of 480, 640 by 480, something like that. This screen, I think, just judging by the the, the, the look of it, I mean, look, I can't, you know, you can't at all read the um, the text there. Thankfully, you've got the uh, the artwork from the scraper. Um, but uh, let's come back out of, uh, of, of Mega Drive. And, and you know, the, the interface is kind of usable, but if we go into uh, the RetroPie menu you know, for, for launching the file manager and stuff, that is, that is completely unreadable. And so, uh, you know, it's not quite what, what we'd really want. Uh, so, uh, you know, a little bit disappointed with that, uh, but, but hopefully subsequent builds, it will be fixed. And, uh, you know, I can, you can see that I've had to... Um, you know, this whole thing is held together with the with 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 with, with, with the uh, the hot melt glue, uh, the hot snot, and it's all kind of held in there. The the supporting posts that that bolt into the other side of the chassis, you know, that hold the the game together. Once done, I had to cut and move those. Um, that just what kind of wasn't happening. Uh, you'll notice the on switch, which I salvaged from the original Game Boy, so that. Uh, there, there well, it's hidden. It's hidden. If you look at the uh, this other knackered Game Boy I've got here, um, uh, it's just hot snotted there, and um, uh, everything else is held in place that way. Um, 
and so it looks a little bit messy, obviously, because it's a home brewed bit of nonsense. But uh, but but kind of uh, what, what I'm quite pleased about is that is that I've just got a little bit more fitting to do. Um, it'll all it'll all it'll all close very nicely with it without me having to you know fiddle anything apart and and, and move anything around. In terms of the power uh, for the for this for this Game Boy Zero build, in fact, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna um, um, I'm just gonna come out of, of RetroPie so I can close the thing down. Uh, so there's the there's the main menu. Let's uh, just go down there. Uh, quit. Uh, shut down the system. Yes. Um, so the thing that, that that I was really pleased about was the um, this little gadget here, which is uh, let's go. I get a bit closer to that. Let's turn turn off there. Yeah, we're down. Um, uh, was was this little board here, which is an Adafruit um, uh, Power Boost One Thousand. Um, uh, it's uh, a, a board that's got a, a, a mini a micro USB uh, f uh, in in there, and uh, uh, you can hang off a, a, a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, which I've got sort of hot glued in down there, and um, uh, it'll charge the battery. Uh, if you're connected to the USB, it would charge the USB and provide up to one amp five volt output. And if you're not charging, uh, it will boost the 3.7 volts of the battery up to five volts and uh, provide you with uh, with five volts to run your system. And also that it has a it has a um, you know an enable pin for the main for the switch, so you can power it and depower it gracefully, and yet it'll still charge if necessary and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, if we look on the back here, and I'm just going to plug in a 5 volt charger and grab the uh, supply there. If I plug in the 5 volt charger here, just a regular phone charger, that kind of thing, you can see uh, we've got a uh, little status light there. Can you see that? I can't see that very well. There we go. Uh, and, and that changes color when we get fully charged. And there's another status light you can see through that same slot that uh, goes red when we're starting to run out of juice. Now, I know a lot of, a lot of builders, um, uh, they uh, tie that to a GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi to do a graceful shutdown when the battery is nearly flat, which is quite nice. I haven't done that on this one, um, but... Um, uh, maybe 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 one of my subsequent builds I'll I'll do that. So let's just unplug that, open that back up again. So yeah, from a power point of view, the Adafruit 1000C and the um, the lithium ion um, you know 200 2000 milliampere hour battery down there um, have been a great combination. They can power the whole thing. And so what do they have to power? Well, they have to power um, uh, five volts to the the Raspberry Pi. Comes in. I, I didn't solder onto the Raspberry Pi board. I thought it'd be quite nice to be able to take the board in and out. So I've just I've just kind of you know butchered up a uh, a USB micro B connector there to make that happen. Then I have to take five volts across to the um, to the display driver board, which I talked about previously, where I had to you know take off the, the, the 12 volt regulator there and replace and go straight in on the five volt rail. And I also have to power up um, this little audio board down here, which is just a little real cheap and cheerful little um, um, sort of um, class D type audio amplifier. I've got a spare one here, which is gonna go into a subsequent build. Uh, let's just grab it out here. Again, you pick these up very inexpensively on eBay or Amazon or whatever, and uh, and, and and that's the one there. You know, you've got like sort of ins and outs and volts there, and uh, it's three three watts, which is just perfect for this tiny, cheap, nasty little speaker down here. Um, uh, ironically, the uh, audio output of the Raspberry Pi, I'm using the analog audio output of the Raspberry Pi, that is, that is fine for driving the, the, the headphone jack, and I reused the headphone jack off the Raspberry Pi. I just desoldered it and transplanted it to there. Um, uh, but the, 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 uh, the, this little kind of 8-ohm speaker here just needs a bit more welly, so that's what the audio amp down there is for. And again, once I finish this video, I'm going to hot snot these all in properly and nicely and then, and then close it up. So the thing I think that, that kind of helped me most in this build is, is having an additional Raspberry uh, uh, hooked up and ready. And so, so here's one here, um, uh, and you can see I've got it going through to this big monitor. It's invaluable to have a big monitor available, uh, you know, an extra... Um, a game controller and a, a keyboard, so that if I if I come out of um, um, uh, uh, emulation station or if I come out of the game here and I go into um, uh, no no don't want to do that I want I want to go to Retropie. Uh, uh, so for things like the file manager um, 
you've really got to have a, a keyboard for navigating that. So if you want to make changes to the file system, which you think you probably don't want to, but 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 there's always sort of files you need to change and and, and scripts you need to edit and things like that. And so having a, a QWERTY keyboard, uh, you know, so you can you can kind of go into the uh, the file system, um, is is perfect. Uh, and yeah, the the thing about Emulation Station and and and, and RetroPie, you know, running all these uh, these emulators, is that it's not a full build of Linux at all. There's no proper desktop you can get to, in any way, shape, or form. And so, you know, if you want to go and, and, and start fiddling around with what's in that folder, that's, uh, there's nothing in there. So let's uh, let's go back to the uh, Mega Drive folder. I know there's some games in there. Uh, there we go. More Combat, Sonic and Knuckles. Um, you can go in there and, and kind of do stuff if you need to. Uh, but suffice to say, you can't do this on that tiny little res. You know, screen that's sitting in the in in the um, the Game Boy. Uh, you know, it's it's much uh, better if you have uh, you know a proper rig sat on your desk where you can we can go in and, and tweak those things about. And the nice thing is, I've got this Raspberry Pi sitting on my little network here, and uh, I can obviously dump ROMs in over the network, um, or I can I can I can dump them in over the good old USB stick, which um, is the way I'm going to be doing it with the the little handheld there.